Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is God's Church of Love online, our Saturday service. And this is part two of Swimming and Living in the Devil's Toilet, Knee Deep in Crap. <laughs> Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they <laughs> that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God mm. but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Swimming or living in the devil's toilet. Knee deep in crap. That's the title of the video. Now, what we do in our lives is we oftentimes as children of God, and of course, the unsaved, <laughs> that's a given there. We choose to swim in this giant toilet. It's filled with water. The water looks like it's clean, but we're not thinking of all the contaminants. Who would dare think of climbing in a big giant toilet and swimming in it, knowing what goes on in that bad boy? Nobody would, nobody in their right mind. However, you notice little dogs will lean over and they'll if they get their head in there, they might lap or they'll sniff around or put their paw in the water or cats or, or fiddle around. No. Well, we as human beings have enough sense to know not to play in a toilet. Even babies will go in there sometimes. You got to watch them. But my point is, as human beings, we are drawn to contaminants. Why are we drawn to contaminants of life? Because of our flesh. Our flesh is bent on sin. Bottom line, we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. Nobody has to teach you how to tell a lie. Nobody has to teach you how to take what does not belong to you. Nobody has to teach you how to scheme. Nobody has to teach you how to slip, slide, keep, and hide. Nobody has to teach you that. Doing wrong is natural. It comes with the package. But the problem with that is even when we're trying to do better, we find ourselves choosing to swim in the toilet rather than the swimming pool. Now, the swimming pool is well maintenance. It's got chlorine in it. It kills the contaminants. But we would rather play around the toilet. Now, here's the sad part. We don't realize that we turn to the beggarly elements of life. We turn to the base things of life. Because the base things, the, the, the beggarly elements, the nasty side of life, the the, the dirty side of life, the sinful side of life, appeals to the flesh. If we're honest, it appeals to the flesh. 
Remember that old song? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to do right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way we are. We love sin. We know it's wrong. But we don't want to do right. Because it appeals to the flesh. That is the reason why we must be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit. That's the difference of living in the flesh and living in the spirit. The Holy Spirit is what comes in us, changes our nature. Our nature is a sinful nature. We're born that way. But the Holy Spirit changes that, like changing your oil from some cheap tacky oil to high-end oil, and then your car runs beautifully. It's the difference in the oil. You're living off an old, rusty, contaminated, muddied up, messed up, uh, oh my goodness, uh, junk going through your, your spirit instead of the Holy Spirit. When you live by the dictates of the Holy Spirit, when you go by what God says in his holy word, you will find that life is much easier. It doesn't stop the challenges. It doesn't make you immune to problems, troubles, or trials. It doesn't make you immune to conflict. But what it will do is make it much easier for you to obey God's ways. It'll give you the desire to obey. The Holy Spirit is there to enable us, to empower us to do what does not come naturally to do. So when I first got saved, I was in a bad habit of shoplifting because shoplifting was fun not having to pay for anything. So I would go to the store before I got saved and, you know, I had a buddy. We used to do it as a game and we would shoplift. What you got? Let me see what you got. We would count up our little spoils. I got a porterhouse steak. What did you get? I got some shrimp. We're all excited, laughing, joking. It was a game. We had the money to pay for it, but it was fun. It appealed to the flesh to get away with something that we knew we had no business doing. Now, when I got saved and I asked God to fill me with his Holy Spirit, the flesh still pulled at me. And when I went into a store, I had to rebuke the desire to steal. I had to rebuke the desire for cigarettes. But as soon as I would do that, the desire would be gone. See, what the problem with many of us is we will not rebuke. We will not take authority. We'll battle with that thing, with our will. Your will is not strong enough to deal with your skin. And I'm talking about your flesh. It's not strong enough. You have been here too long in your mess, playing in that toilet, way too long. It's a habit. The toilet is home for you. So now you have to lift your sights, climb up out of that toilet. And climbing up out of that toilet is going to take way more effort than staying in it, laying in it, doing what you want to do in it, doing your dirt. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, now your nature is changed and something in you doesn't want to live in that toilet anymore. You ever hear of people who live in a bad side of the, of, of, of the tracks and they want to come out from over there. They want to see what, what else is in the world. How do other people live? And they go to school and they get educated and they fight. They swim upstream. They go against the current of their environment in order to get away from their environment. Now, they may come back and make changes later. But first, they have to be strong and completely changed. And they have to be equipped and established in order to be able to come back and make any changes or else when they come back, they'll fall back. So they climb up, they climb out. But you notice when you're trying to climb up and out, there are people around you. There's always a few that are around you 
that want to make you feel like you're holier than thou. They want to make you feel guilty for trying. They want to make you feel guilty for following God. They want to make you feel stupid, silly. All that ain't necessary. You're so legalistic. What's wrong with you, super, super Christian? You know, you do whatever you have to do to climb up out of that toilet. That's what you do. You don't worry about what they think. You don't worry about what they say. And if they hurt your feelings, ask God to heal your feelings. You'll get over it real quick. But you got to go to God for it all. It's a transition. And it's hard to make that transition. But you do it. You do what you got to do. Do or die. You have to have that kind of attitude. So now you're climbing up out the toilet and you're pursuing God. And now you notice the more you pursue, the more you're feeling that Holy Spirit working in you. And the more you obey, the more God helps you obey. The more God helps you obey, the more power you get. The more power you get, the more authority you take. The more authority you take over your enemy and your flesh and yourself, the more you get victories. The stronger you get, the quicker you grow. And you're reading God's word, teaching yourself how to wield God's spiritual weapons. So even if a church isn't teaching you what you need to learn, you got to learn it for yourself in God's word. I didn't learn how to get inner healing from the church that I went to. I learned it from reading God's word. I didn't learn how much I needed to forgive from the church, even though it was preached, but it wasn't preached that heavily at the time I had gone. I learned it from a scripture the Lord led me to when I told him, okay, I shared with him my fallacies and my problems. And I said, Lord, there's here's the list of a, lo a whole lot of people I don't want to forgive. And if it were up to me, if they died today or tomorrow, I'd go to the grave and dance on it. I'd throw a party. But I know your word says, because <clears throat> I had just read it. I know your word says, if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. I'm like, okay, now, this is a problem because I don't want to forgive. Now I'm being real. I'm being honest. That's the first place you start with, with God. Be real. The next thing I did was I said, but it was the nevertheless type of a prayer. Nevertheless, if you, if it's that big of a deal to you and it's not to me and there's nothing in me that can forgive the guys that raped me, I can't forgive the, the one that molested me. I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to forgive. But if it's that important to you, then I'm asking you this, Lord, give me the ability to forgive. Then I'll be able to forgive. I left it at that. That was the end of that prayer. I moved on to something else. Three months later, to show you how God will make you cross the paths of people that you dealt with before to show you to take your temperature, so to speak. I crossed the path of a guy who slapped me. I never had a man lay hands on me except my father. He was the only one. He'd tear my little behind up, but he was a good father, good father. But this guy had no business putting his hands on me. And I treated him like he was dead meat. When I saw him, it was like he was not even in the room. Now, when I went to the store with my mentor, my spiritual mentor, he was right there at Thrifty's as a security guard. And before I knew it, I walked up. I said, oh, that looks like so-and-so. I walked up and he he glanced and I said, how you doing? Smile goes across my face. I'm feeling free. The lump is gone. The knot is gone. I'm like, hey, now, this feels good. The anger is gone. I was tripping off of that. And he was too, because he did a double take like, oh, you talking to me? And he said, how you doing? I said, fine. He said, well, where you been? I said, ah, oh. I said, I got saved. That was my testimony right there. I know he never forgot that. Because 15 years later, after I married my husband, Milton, 
there he comes into the church with his wife, giving his heart to the Lord, finally had enough of the streets. And we all got along just fine. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will take you above and beyond your capability to obey and will give you the power. But you've got to be willing to climb up out that toilet. I don't care how deeply engraved your name is on the back of that seat. That is not your home. The toilet is not your life. You can choose to die in it, but that's not your life. Your life comes from God, his ways, and his Holy Spirit. And here's the problem. When you're in that toilet, you're at the mercy of the elements. Somebody could come and you, you can't do anything about it because you're too far in it. You're so far knee deep in crap that you can't climb up fast enough to stop whoever's out there pulling that lever, getting ready to flush you down. And there are many people in your lives that will flush you. You've been letting them flush you for a long time, a lot of you. And you let them and let them and let them. And every time you turn around, you're drowning and you, you knee deep in mess. A messy life, messy emotions, messy attitude. Messy choices. But God says, hey, I come that ye might have life. And that more abundantly. The way that whole scripture goes, I want to read the whole thing so you get the picture. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that ye might have life. And that more abundantly. Now, there's a video I did a while back with my makeup and everything. and I was, I was role playing a demon. And there's one part of that part of that, uh, of that portrayal. I think it's called the demon of scorn. And in this one, it was, it was uh, pulling down a person through their own emotions, their own choices and all of that. And, uh, the, and the demon is just bragging on himself. And he says, I'll be the head, and you'll be the tail, and I'll wag you. <laughs> now, the, the word says you are the head and not the tail, doesn't it? But Satan will flip-flop you around like a piece of dirty rag if, he, if you let him. When it says that, the, the, the devil comes like a lion seeking whom he may devour. Comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The word may is the operative word, which means we give him permission to devour us by the choices we make. So we can choose to be devoured or we can choose to be developed and edified by the spirit and the love of God, by the word of God. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, this is what we need to do in our lives. We have to, Psalm, I mean, uh, 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 Romans 12, verse one. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies, let me repeat, that you present your bodies. Let me repeat that again. <clears throat> okay, you listening? That you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which means that's the least you can do. That's your reasonable service. And I'm not done. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? This is me talking now. How do you renew your mind? The word, prayer, obedience. Now, the walk with Christ is not a legalistic walk, but you have to engage your will. You have to choose to put your clothes on, or you have to choose to take a shower or a bath, 
You have to choose to go to the grocery store and go shopping. You have to choose to get in your car, turn that key and hit the ignition and the gas and take off and go where you got to go. You got to choose where you're going. Now, my question to you is, what is your choice? Do you choose to stay and dabble and play, swim around and live in that toilet, the devil's toilet? Or do you choose to climb out by the power vested in you by the Holy Ghost? Now, when your mother's getting ready to, to dunk you in that tub and give you a bath, I'm talking about you as a little child, getting ready to dunk you and put you in that bath and you're running away because you don't feel like getting wet. And your mother has to catch up with your behind and, and grab you and put you in that tub. Imagine how much easier it would be if you cooperated. See, that's what some of us do with God. We run from him when he's getting ready to do a cleanup job on our behinds. We don't want to wipe. We don't want to wash behind our ears. We don't want to wash under our nails. We don't want to have to brush our teeth. We don't want to have to do all that. We don't like to do all that as kids. We want to go play in the mud. We want to go play in the street and, and get dirty and have fun. We want to play. Well, God is saying when you were a child, you thought as a child, you acted as a child. You're an adult now. If you want to be about your father's business, it's time to grow up. And it's time to go up. Oh, we're moving on up, moving on up to... Now, listen, you're climbing up out that toilet now. It's time. It's time out for letting the devil devour you. You are not the devil's flunky unless you choose to be. So now you need to get tired. You need to ask God to change your attitude, change your perspective, to make you sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sometimes we have to come to the end of ourselves before we're willing to do all that it takes to give it all to God. I mean, give it all to him. Because, see, some of us don't realize as holy as we think we're living, we still got a lot of flesh that we ain't dealing with. Sorry for the bad grammar, but I'm saying it like that for, uh, <laughs> for effect. Make it dig in harder. Some of us don't want to deal with some of our flesh because we like it like that. I like it like that. I like it like that. Yeah, we don't want to change some things because it's cozy. It's cool. Yeah. But there are some things God has to remove out of you before he can move you to the next level. Are you willing to let some things go? Are you willing to let your ego go? Some of you want to impress. You want to dress to impress. You want to walk to impress. You want to talk to impress. You want to, to praise God to impress. Oh, we got a lot of that in church. A lot of religious spirits trying to praise God so they can look good. Some, some of you give to impress. So you give a big old fat church to the, I mean, a big old fat check to the church. And you got a widow living right next door or a widow in your church that can barely buy um, some groceries, barely getting by. And it never dawned on you like me, didn't dawn on me either, to take that widow and take them grocery shopping and spend that $500 you were going to spend on a new pair of earrings, on some clothes for her, some food for her, some blankets. Okay. So anyway, so uh, there are a lot of ways we live in the toilet and we don't realize it. Some of us who, who are, are, are committed to, to Christ, there are some parts of our lives we still haven't disciplined. I'm guilty too. All of us. It's always a constant work in progress. When I talk about that, I'm not excluding me. I'm struggling with stuff too. Stuff that I've been undisciplined with in my life. 
I'm not dabbling in sin, but I'm definitely that I'm definitely too comfortable in areas of laziness. I'm not going to lie about that, but I ain't going to tell you in what areas in my business. Anyway, but God knows, and I talk to him all about it. <laughs> so I'm not saying this. I'm not bringing this word to condemn. I'm bringing it to open our eyes and to stir up your desire to move up to a higher level. Let's move up and out together. Let's do that. We do not have to stay in the beggarly elements of the flesh. We do not have to be led around by our emotions, by our attitudes. You ever see how you have a little stubborn dog and the person's got a leash on them and the dog doesn't want to move and, and they got their nail, their claws dug in the cement and the owner's just dragging them down the street and they're just fighting every step of the way. Some of us are like that. Some of us are like that. God's trying to bring us in one direction. We want to go in the other direction. It's it's really it's really sad. But here's the the saddest part: the direction we want to go is where Satan is trying to pull us. He's got a leash too, and he's pulling us, baby. Oh, he's yanking our chain. He's yanking us every which way but right. Every which way but right. We want to do this. That ain't right. We want to do that. That ain't right. We know we don't want God looking at what we're doing in the back, in the corner, in the dark. We know we, we want God to turn a deaf ear to what comes out of our mouths. We know we want God to turn a blind eye to what we do. <laughs> so anyway... I just want to ask you to please go to God. There's a scripture in Psalms that says, Lord, search my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. We have to ask God that because there are times we think we're doing well in the spirit. Let me share this real quick and then I'm going to close. There are times I was in church. We were fasting. That's what It's a blessing to be with the body of Christ. Don't ever think you can fly solo. The body of Christ is a real blessing. Anyway, we were fasting and a couple of people were standing up giving their testimonies of victories they got during that week. And while they're talking, the Holy Spirit's talking to me, telling me something about me I didn't even know was going on. There's a woman in our church. She would get up and sing. And I mean, this woman could sing. And, oh, my goodness, she had a beautiful voice. Okay. Uh, every time she sang, I had a dialogue going on in my mind. See, so if y'all think that you're doing good because it's not coming out your mouth, if it's in here, that means it's in here. That means if it's in your head, it's in your heart. And if it's in your heart, baby, it's got to come up and out. So listen, I'm sitting there listening to her sing her solos for months. And every time she get, grabs that mic and starts singing, I got a private dialogue nobody knows about but God. And I'm sitting up there, look at that. Don't take all that. She thinks she's all that. Look at her, showboating. She look like Reverend Ike. She might as well have a cape going through all these little gyrations like she's at a nightclub. Woo! Boy, I mean, I was going at it, y'all. Good old holy living, sanctified, spirit filled me. Yes, I had that dialogue going. Holy Spirit tells me one Wednesday night when we're at church, while everybody's giving their testimony, Holy Spirit's talking to me. Remember that thought? Remember that thought? He's quoting them back to me. Then he says this, you are jealous of her. I, I, I was dumbfounded, y'all. Holy Ghost filled me? Moi? Yes, I will. Soon as the Holy Spirit revealed it to me, the truth registered in my Oh, I was like, oh my God, I am so sorry. I didn't even know it. <laughs> it's good to pray that prayer. See if there be any wicked way in me. 
I stood up that night. I said, I am not going to let the devil blackmail me, lock me down, tired. No, no, no. I'm coming up out of this. I'm coming up out that toilet. I stood up when, you know, when there was an opening, I stood up and they thought I was going to give a testimony and I gave a confession. And I said, I'm saying this openly so I never have to deal with this privately ever again. And I called the sister's name. I said, I apologize to you because the Holy Spirit just told me I was jealous of you. I was jealous of your beautiful voice. And you don't deserve that. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was bawling. The tears were just drenching my blouse. I was just soaked in tears. But it was freeing, you guys. Sometimes we have to get in there and get where the dirt is, where we don't want to clean behind the ears and under the nails. And yeah, we don't want to get back there and wipe real good. Yeah, we don't want to do all that. It's work. It doesn't feel good knowing that you're that human. But for the Holy Ghost, we're all a mess. So I ask you, choose to live. Choose to live in the spirit. Because as long as you live in the spirit, you're not dragged around by the devil on a leash, taking wherever he wants you to go, tossing you wherever he wants you to be, jerking your emotions around, jerking your thoughts around, jerking your life around, wasting your years, wasting your tears. Don't let Satan do that to you. Don't, don't cast your pearls before a swine. Don't throw your love and your energy on people that don't appreciate you. Don't waste your time caught up in habits that don't get you anywhere. Before you know it, five years have gone by and you're caught up on the internet or you're caught up with somebody down the street who is doing nothing but wasting your time. Come on, man, let's hang out. Come on, man, let's get hot. Or you got some gossip in your church that loves to tell everybody's business and they use your ear as a garbage can and you let them instead of correcting them, telling them you don't want to hear it. There are a whole lot of ways to be led around by the devil's leash. Ways that we don't think about because we've been doing it so long in the church, we think it's okay. Ask God to search you. Search your heart and see if there be any wicked way in you. God bless you as you climb up out of that toilet. It's time to live now. It's time to be free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And he whom the son sets free is free indeed. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.